Welcome. In a previous video, I did a setup of QSync Central on a QNAP NAS, and then I did a video on setting up the client on a Mac, and in this video, I'm setting up the QSync client on a Windows 10 PC. So I'll put a link in the description to my QNAP playlist where you can find those other videos. I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So if you aren't familiar with QSync, it's a like a Dropbox type uh, service or a Google Drive or a OneDrive service for QNAP NAS. So I'm on the Windows 10 PC and I'm logged into the QTS and then I can go to QSync Central. And from here you can see it says getting started with QSync clients. I'll click on the Windows version and that will download. I'll click show in folder. Okay, it's done here. It says QNAP QSync Central Windows. I'll double click on that. Close my downloads folder and I'll minimize the browser. I'll click on the little armor down below. It says, do you want to allow this device to make changes? I'll say yes. It says select a language. Looks like lots of languages on there. I'll hit okay. It says, welcome to the QSync client setup. I'll click next. I'll accept the license terms. I'll click next. It's asking which components to install. So it has start menu shortcuts, desktop shortcuts, quick launch shortcuts, and then it has different languages. That's about it. I'll click next. It says choose the install location. So I'll do the default. I'll hit install. It says QSync is going to close all your file explorers now. Click OK to proceed or select cancel to abort installation. So I'll hit OK. Okay, the installation is complete. It says launch QSync client. I'll click finish. It says select your region. So if I click on this, it has global and China. So I'm just going to choose global. Then I'll hit apply. It says welcome to QSync. So it tells a little bit about what QSync does. I'll hit next. So this talks about LandSync. So what LandSync does is if you have a couple of people at one location and you have a QNAP NAS at a different location over the internet, the people at the local location can share files between each other and then only one of them has to sync back to the NAS. So that's a little bit more efficient than if every computer is syncing back and forth to the NAS. So you can turn that on with the enable land sync feature. I'll hit next. So this is talking about the little dock down here. Right here it says QSync. We can bring that up and this will give us our status of our QSync setup. I'll hit next. And this is talking about smart delete. So you can have it delete items on your local computer but not delete them on the NAS. So if you need to reclaim some space on your local computer, you can still have a copy available if you need it. I'll click next again. It says access files via file station. So you can log in with any browser to access the files in your QSync drive. I'll hit finish. It's going to say search for the NAS. So I'll click on that. I'll say via LAN. Defender is asking to use the network, so I'll hit say allow access. It found it. I'll hit select. Or I'll gotta choose it and I'll hit select. And then I'll type in my username and password. And you can choose secure HTTPS. If you're doing this over the internet, you definitely want to do that. I don't know that I have that set up yet. Um, it says automatically select the best connection method. It says assign a name to identify this computer on your NAS. So I'm going to change this to Windows 10 NUC. I'll hit apply. Of course, I can't have spaces. <laughs> I'll hit apply. It says select folders to sync. So on the NAS, we have slash home slash dot QSync. So when you see a dot there, that means it's a hidden file in the Linux file system. So this is where it probably stores things on the device itself. And then it sets up a separate share to connect it. And then on my local device, it says users rec QSync. So this was very similar to how it set it up on the Mac actually. So I'll hit finish. And now it's connecting up. It should download at least one file here. Synchronizing, okay. It added the file reflections. So I could click this little thing here and change my notifications if I wanted to. So here it is. So I will just create a folder here. So this will have synced. If I go down here to the little um, tool down here, I'll click it. There we go. It may not sync that unless something's in the folder. Let's try and add something to the folder. We'll add a document, okay? Okay, there we go. So it says new rich text document, it synced it up. So it looks like it didn't want to uh, sync the empty folder, which is probably fine. So if I close this now, I'll go back into my web interface. And if we go over here to the left, we can see devices. And I'm on the Q Sync Central. 
and you can see we have the Windows 10 NUC. So we can change the settings here, and these look like the settings you could do, or the global settings we looked at earlier. And then if I click on Event Logs, it'll say here that I logged in with this device, and I copied a file and stuff. So now I'll close QSync Central, and it'll open up File Station, and I'll minimize some of these. So in our uh, home folder here, there was that hidden file. You don't see that here because the QNAP NAS syncs it to this QSync share here. So if we click on that, we'll see reflections and we'll say new folder. We can open that up and we can see the new rich text document. So using a system like this is an alternative to say using a traditional file server where you store your files on the server all the time. What this does is it gives you a copy on each of your devices. So if you have like 20 terabytes of video files, this probably isn't the most ideal solution. But if you have a smaller number of files and you like to have them accessible even when the internet's down on your device, then this could be a good solution for you. Every device that the files sync to, uh, it backs up to that device. So I think it can be very handy for that. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.